Good afternoon from Manila. My name is Evgeny Zhukov, and I am Director General of Central and West Regional Department in the Asian Development Bank. I am very honored to be welcoming you today to the Central Asia Regional Economic Cooperation Program, or CAREC, high-level session during ADB's 54th Annual General Meeting. As we recount CAREC's role over the past 20 years in strengthening regional connectivity and trade among member countries, the session today will start the discussion to set CAREC's agenda for the future based on technology and digital transformation to power deeper regional cooperation and integration. We hope you have already settled now. I would like to first recognize CAREC's host government for this year and our co-chair for today, Mr. Mikhail Jabarov, Minister of Economy of Azerbaijan. I would also like to recognize each of our valuable CAREC member countries who have taken time out of their busy schedules to join and enlighten us and the audience today with their thoughts on regional cooperation through digital transformation. We have the following participants. For Afghanistan, Mr. Mohammed Khalid Payanda, Acting Minister of Finance. For People's Republic of China, Mr. Qianggu Zhou, Director General, Department of International, Economic and Financial Cooperation, Ministry of Finance. For Georgia, Mr. Lasha Kutishvili, Minister, Ministry of Finance. For Kazakhstan, Mr. Alibe Konturov, Vice Minister of National Economy. For Kyrgyz Republic, Mr. Sultan Ahmadov, Deputy Minister, Ministry of Economy and Finance. For Mongolia, Ms. Jaflan Bold, Minister, Ministry of Finance. For Pakistan, Mr. Zubair Ashgar Qureshi, Additional Secretary, Economic Affairs Division. For Tajikistan, Mr. Nimotolo Hikmato Zuda, Assistant to the President of Tajikistan on Economic Issues. For Turkmenistan, Mr. Mohamed Gildi Serdarov, Minister, Ministry of Finance and Economy. For Uzbekistan, Mr. Shukrat Vafayev, Deputy Minister, Ministry of Investment and Foreign Trade. Before we formally begin, I'm also pleased to welcome President of Islamic Development Bank, Dr. Bandar Hajar. Vice President for Operations One in ADB and our co-chair today, Mr. Shikshin Chen. And Vice President of the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, Mr. Joachim von Amsberg. We also have with us Ms. Susanna Hargitay, the Managing Director for Central Asia of the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. To help inform and moderate our discussions today, we have with us Mr. Tom Standage, Deputy Editor of The Economist. He's responsible for newspapers' digital strategy and the development of the new digital products. We expect that discussion today will help highlight and open up new opportunities for deepening regional cooperation among current countries based on application of digital technologies. The del deliberations today will provide key inputs for the preparation of the first CAREC digital strategy, which we expect to complete later this year for the endorsement at the CAREC's ministerial conference at the end of November or early December 2021. And now, to deliver the welcome remarks, I invite Mr. Mikhail Jabarov, Minister of Economy, Azerbaijan, Mr. Jabarov, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, Your Excellency, ADB Vice uh, President, Mr. Uh, Shui Hin Chen, uh, honorable uh, ministers and dear uh, colleagues, uh, dear uh, participants. First of all, I would like to extend my appreciation to Asian Development Bank and CARIC Secretariat for organizing this uh, virtual high-level session during uh, ADB annual meeting. 
Despite COVID-19 uh, pandemic, ADB uh, carried member countries and its development partners undertake efficient activity towards uh, further strengthening of regional cooperation in the CARIC region. As a CARIC chair in 2021, I want to clearly express Azerbaijan's commitment uh, to continue to promote stronger regional cooperation and integration. CARIC program has been actively contributing to the region's development for two decades and no doubt that it will remain crucial to its post-pandemic recovery. Program supports further strengthening uh, of the regional connectivity by investing in high-quality projects in varied clusters, including activity in new priority areas and enhancing its role as a catalyst for regional cooperation in the field of research, knowledge, and best practices sharing. Today, we are discussing a very important milestone devoted to 20th anniversary of CARIC reimagining regional cooperation through digital transformation. Our country pays great attention to increasing growth and necessity of the digitalization and related transformation of the economy, which will certainly serve as a tool to further boost cooperation in the CARIC region. The government of Azerbaijan uh, has adopted and currently developing a number of programs aimed at digital transformation of country's economy. Last year has shown uh, clearly that level of digitalization of uh, economy had a direct impact on easing the burden uh, caused by the pandemic. In February 2021, uh, Azerbaijan 2030 national priorities on socioeconomic development strategy was endorsed, which includes five main uh, directions, uh, namely sustainably growing competitive economy, dynamic and inclusive society based on social justice, competitive human capital and land for modern innovations, great return to the liberated territories, clean environment and green growth country. The above mentioned national priorities are of particular importance to the fulfillment of our commitments arising from Transforming Our World 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development of the United Nations. Besides, by the recent presidential decrees, the government has been tasked to develop smart city and smart village concept, as well as to draft the digital transformation concept. Worthwhile to mention that in January this year, Center for Analysis and Coordination of the Fourth Industrial Revolution was established under the Minister of Economy, with major aim to coordinate efforts related to adoption of the Fourth Industrial Revolution technologies and digital economy in our country. Pursuant to the founding documents signed between the government uh, of Azerbaijan and World Economic Forum on March 30th, the mentioned center is also hosting the Azerbaijani affiliate of the World Economic Forum's network of the Centers for Industrial Revolution. The Center for Industrial Revolution Azerbaijan has already become operational on April this year, and it is planned that the affiliate center will be mostly concentrating on artificial intelligence, internet of things, digital economy and trade, related issues and projects. In the meantime, we were delighted to hear about joint initiative of the World Economic Forum and CARIC Institute called Digital CARIC. We hope that this initiative will be further supported and developed to promote digital trade and investments among CARIC member countries and to unleash full potential of the fourth industrial revolution technologies in our region. Within CARIC program, we often discuss the regional connectivity. Being an important transportation hub in the region, Azerbaijan is continuously improving cross-border and transit procedures and logistics, digitalizing log logistic systems and trade processes. Dear friends, you may know that the new era has arrived for the region and particularly for Azerbaijan. The rehabilitation and development of the territories liberated from almost 30 years long occupation by neighboring Armenia, including establishment of the necessary infrastructure enabling incentives for business development and implementation of new transport and economic corridors, especially Zangizur Corridor, are among the list of priorities on our economic agenda for years to come. These activities will certainly contribute to the enhancement of regional cooperation. We are currently intensively working to fight against pandemic. In January 2021, vaccination strategy against COVID-19 for years 2021-22 in Azerbaijan was adopted. And since 18 January, the vaccination process of population uh, was launched and is being successfully implemented. As of 2nd May 2021, um, 1 1.5 million people have been vaccinated, which consists a bit over 15.15% of country population.
In the view of pandemic and complicated global economic processes, undoubtedly, digitalization will have practical value in post-pandemic environment and efficient transformation will support and speed up achieving programs objectives, contributing to the prosperity in the whole current region. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Jabarov. May I now call on uh, Mr. Tom Standage, who will serve as a moderator for today's session. Thank you very much, Director General Zukov. I am Tom Standage, Deputy Editor at The Economist, and our topic today is reimagining re regional cooperation through digital transformation. We have a distinguished lineup of speakers, as we've heard. We have two panel discussions. But before we start, I'm going to provide some brief introductory remarks to set the scene. So I've been writing about the social and economic impact of technology for more than 20 years at The Economist. And digital transformation and how it can be harnessed for the benefit of society by driving social and economic development is a topic of particular interest to me. For a long time, one of the big challenges in this field was separating cause and effect. Do rich countries simply have more technology because they are rich? Or does having more technology help countries expand their economies? A series of studies in the early 2000s demonstrated the potential of digital technology and in particular mobile phones and internet access to accelerate economic growth. A pioneering analysis of fish prices, for example, on the coast of India by Robert Jensen of Harvard University showed how access to mobile networks made markets more efficient, eliminated waste, reduced prices and increased fishermen's profits. Information makes markets work and markets improve welfare, Mr. Jensen concluded. More recently, a study led by Christine Zhengwei Zhang, an economist at the World Bank in 2009, examined the impact of mobile phones and internet access in 120 countries. And it found that an extra 10 phones per 100 people in a typical developing country was correlated with a 0.8 percentage point increase in GDP growth. For internet access, the increase in GDP growth was as much as 1.4 percentage points. So we have strong evidence that allowing information to move more freely uh, um, helps make markets more efficient and unleashes entrepreneurship. And this has a direct impact on economic growth. These sorts of findings have led governments and development agencies around the world to focus on boosting connectivity through things like liberalizing telecoms, through rolling out village phone projects and so forth. And a lot of progress has been made in the last decade or two. But even now, there's a lot of scope for improving coverage. Mobile phone penetration varies widely within the Karak region, with fewer than 75 subscriptions per 100 people in Afghanistan, Pakistan and Uzbekistan, but more than 150 subscriptions per 100 inhabitants in, say, Turkmenistan. Regional connectivity and access speeds could also be boosted through projects such as TASIM, the Trans-Eurasian Information Superhighway. But in the past decade, the focus has shifted to other ways beyond just connectivity in which digital technologies can boost development. So let's consider some of those. First and foremost has been the rise of mobile money, mobile payments and mobile banking, all delivered via mobile devices. The most famous pioneer in this area was the M-Pesa scheme in Kenya. But more recently, mobile payment schemes based on mobile devices and super apps pioneered in the, the People's Republic of China have become the dominant paradigm. At the same time, the range of financial services being delivered by mobile devices has expanded beyond payments to include savings, insurance, loans and other services. All of this reduces friction, saves time and brings more people into the formal economy and thus into the tax system. And we can see within the Karak region, excluding the People's Republic of China, the proportion of adults with mobile money accounts is highest in Mongolia with 38 percent and Pakistan with 14 percent, both of which are above the global average of 10 percent. Another area where technology can boost growth is e-commerce. In the past decade, the People's Republic of China has become the global leader in e-commerce and more than a quarter of its retail sales now happen online. Buying and selling online drives growth by making it easier for buyers and sellers to find each other. But in many developing countries, according to the United Nations, the growth of e-commerce is being held back by factors like 
the lack of affordable internet access, over-reliance on cash payments, lack of trust, poor digital literacy, and government's failure to remove regulatory barriers. Another area where digital transformation can boost growth is e-government. This makes it easier for people and companies to apply for permits, register property, claim benefits, pay taxes, and so on. And the e-government leader within the Karak region is Kazakhstan, which ranks higher than Japan, the People's Republic of China, and Sweden in the provision of online services. It's a reminder that performance in e-government is not simply a function of wealth. The UN notes that all customs declarations in Kazakhstan have been processed electronically since 2018. Another area of opportunity is electronic learning, e-learning. The pandemic has highlighted the strengths and weaknesses of online education as school closures force students in many countries to switch to remote learning. Lack of access to broadband connectivity disrupted the education of many students. But a lasting legacy of the pandemic may be to accelerate the adoption of online education because when you have the right technology and the right materials, it can work very well. And it's also the logical way to enable workers to acquire new skills later in life in response to the technological shifts we may be seeing in the workplace as a result of things like the fourth industrial revolution. So the main ways that digital technology can boost growth are connectivity, mobile finance, e-commerce, e-government, and e-learning. And governments can encourage all of these things through their policies, through things like deregulation of telecoms markets, uh, modernizing banking regulations, and so on. But there are even greater opportunities to drive growth if governments choose to work together on a regional basis. And we have many examples of this from around the world. For example, the Nordic countries pioneering regional telecoms network in the 1980s, NMT, which led to the emergence of Nokia and Ericsson as global telecoms equipment powerhouses. Or, for example, the East African community's regional visa scheme, or the European Union's harmonization of trade and other activities within its internal markets. So we can see the potential of regional cooperation. So how might CARAC members benefit from cooperation in their use of digital technologies? If we consider each of the five clusters of the CARAC 2030 strategy in turn, here are some potential areas of opportunity. The first area is economic and financial stability. A recent report from the CAREC Institute noted that the region trails the world and other regions on financial inclusion, but it has immense potential for financial inclusion by harnessing financial technologies. Coordinated regulatory reform could encourage the use of these technologies to boost growth. In some parts of the world, we've seen that mobile money systems have been unable to connect to each other. The Karak region has the opportunity to leapfrog this problem of interoperability by promoting regional interoperability of mobile payment and banking systems. And this could smooth cross-border transactions, strengthen regional financial integration and promote stability. The second area is trade, tourism and economic corridors. Again, this is an area where coordinated regulatory reform could encourage adoption of technology. And this could promote e-commerce. Other practical steps that could be taken to boost regional trade include digitizing supply chains using common standards and promoting inter-regional travel through the introduction of a Silk Road visa. Both of these would require interoperability of systems and standards, but the pandemic may be a helpful catalyst for change because it already requires border procedures to be constantly revised and enhanced and updated. One challenge with integration of regional trade is a lack of data, and this gap could perhaps be filled by establishing a regional body to gather relevant data. The third area is interactivity, is infrastructure and connectivity. Energy, aviation and telecoms are three areas where there's scope for technical enhancements and regional cooperation. In energy, that would involve the harmonization of regulatory frameworks and technical standards for cross-border connectivity with power and trading in power, coupled with knowledge sharing around low carbon technologies. And this could improve the affordability and resilience of energy supplies while also reducing carbon emissions. 
In aviation, upgrading regional airports to support contactless technology and digital ticketing would streamline travel both within the Carrick region and with the rest of the world. And in telecoms, the region might consider what the East African community did when it tried to reduce or eliminate mobile roaming charges. And that project um, strongly contributed to integrated economic activity in the region by enabling cheaper cross-border communication. Agriculture and water is the fourth area. A regional data repository for disease surveillance and monitoring of animal products could facilitate regional trade by allowing closer integration of regional and global value chains. This could build on existing initiatives to introduce common sanitary and phytosanitary measures. Another potential area for cooperation is to address gaps in the provision and analysis of weather data and other predictive tools for farmers. This might also take into account regional water distribution, basin management and storage. Finally, human development. Greater use of digital platforms could boost the development of skills and integrate the regional labour market. A regional job search system could help match workers to jobs more efficiently. It could also provide valuable information about the availability or shortage of skills in particular fields. The pandemic has highlighted the potential of remote learning technologies and it could provide the catalyst for cross-border cooperation on higher education, adult learning and technical and vocational training. A similar approach could also be taken in healthcare where telehealth technology allows for remote consultation, sharing of resources and expertise and greater cooperation between specialists across the region. Once again, the pandemic could serve as a catalyst for regional cooperation in this respect. So there is clearly plenty of scope for cooperation between CAREC members in the field of digital transformation. So now to the part of this session a lot of us have been waiting for, our panel discussions with our distinguished speakers. We have two panels. The first is on challenges and opportunities for digital cooperation. And the second is on the role of CAREC in promoting public-private partnerships to deepen digital transformation in the region. Viewers who are joining us online are invited to submit questions at the right hand side of the screen by pressing the Q&A button. And you can also vote on the questions that have already been submitted. The questions with the highest number of votes um, may stand a better chance of being answered by the speakers. And we plan to take a couple of questions from the audience at the end of each discussion. Before we start, I would like to remind our speakers to please keep to the three minute time limit in responding to the questions. And this will ensure that we get to hear everybody during the discussions. So let's begin the first panel on challenges and opportunities for digital cooperation. And I'm going to address the first question to Dr. Bandar Hajar, the president of the Islamic Development Bank. And here's the question, Dr. Hajar. Where are the greatest opportunities, do you think, for CAREC member countries to collaborate on regional initiatives as part of their digital transformation? And what are the barriers to greater cooperation? Thank you so much, and it is a great honor and pleasure to participate in this high level session. Uh, opportunities bound and barriers can be overcome through multilateral cooperation. To start with uh, integrating the use of digitization across the spectrum of health operations is a cross-cutting priority for us. To improve the quality of public services, support private sector growth and enhance resilience, especially during COVID-19 pandemic, we all saw that digital technologies uh, play a crucial role in keeping economies and societies resilient. Most importantly, uh, importantly, digital technologies have been instrumental in monitoring and understanding the spread of the disease and improving healthcare coordination among public health institutions, as, uh, as you have mentioned earlier. Furthermore, digital communication platforms have helped maintain business continuity, uh, keep uh, students in education, provide access to certain health services through 
healthcare, all these technological solutions have played an integral role during pandemic. So it is now clear that their adoption will persist. As the crisis evolves, our development priority needs to be realigned with the realities of the post COVID-19 world. And to do, the, to do that, we have to study lessons learned from the COVID-19 crisis carefully and reinforce our joint effort uh, to translate them into opportunities. The first lesson from the crisis is that the current challenge are beyond the capacity of any single country and solidarity is the only way to overcome these challenges. In Central Asia, CARIC is already a well-functioning cooperation platform which lays a solid foundation to address the new challenge of the post-COVID-19 world, especially from the digital transformation perspective. In this regard, digital infrastructure, connectivity, harmonization, regulatory policy, enhancement of digital skills are the primary areas we deem essential. These three areas have critical roles in leveraging the existing momentum of digital transform transformation in a large segment of societies in Central Asia. However, to make that happen, we need to pay attention to specific barriers and challenges. First, the existing divide in access to digital technologies is a significant issue of concern for all of us since there are substantial disparity in access uh, to the internet access across the CARIC region. CARIC countries still need to bridge the digital divide, which require ICT investment and knowledge service to improve accessibility and efficiency in public service, upgrade productivity, enable smoother people-to-people -people contact and support integration in regional and global value uh, chains. We could also add the lack of in interoperability and uh, of existing system across the countries and insufficient private sector engagement in digital infra in infrastructure uh, in, uh, in uh, investment. We have already taken action to move, uh, to make this happen in the Peric region. To give one specific example, the bank approved in 2017, 273 million a dollar project for Turkmenistan to upgrade the country's ICT infrastructure to be catalyst for the next milestone project uh, in the region. As we continue extending our support to Central Asia, we are also glad to know that the current program already provides a coherent uh, framework to synergize uh, the effort, uh, including the digital information. Let me retreat that the Islamic Development Bank is uh, committed to continuing to do so. It is uh, part of this uh, partnership as we move forward. And I wish uh, the meeting a great success uh, to, toward this uh, fruitful discussion. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, so the, um, the opportunities there uh, for cooperation are in infrastructure, connectivity, skills, but the barriers are in connectivity, interoperability and a lack of private sector involvement. I'd like to turn now, please, to uh, Mr. Saeed Ashraf Siddiqui, uh, Joint Secretary of the Economic Affairs Division for Pakistan, uh, to hear his perspective on the question. So where do you think the greatest opportunities are and where do you think the barriers are to greater cooperation? Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Excellencies and distinguished delegates. First of all, I would like to thank the government of the Republic of Azerbaijan as the chair of the CARIC program for 2021 and the Asian Development Bank for jointly organizing this very important session. The rapid development and spread of digital technologies across the globe are changing every aspect of people's lives, business and society. This inevitable change promises greater economic development productivity, connectivity, financial inclusion, and access to trade and public services. Following the global trend, Pakistan has achieved significant milestones in its journey to digital transformation. It includes setting up of dedicated institutions and allied infrastructure to spearhead various IT initiatives, 
formulation of policy frameworks and implementation of a number of successful IT based programs for provision of services to the citizens. The government of Pakistan is committed to continue this momentum to enhance application of technology in public processes. Now turning to opportunities for collaboration. This region has the potential to emerge as the center for trade and commerce in order to achieve higher levels of economic growth and reduce poverty. The pandemic induced changes in our lifestyles can act as a catalyst to promote e-commerce and speedy custom clearances. Electronic single window trade facilitation projects are the way forward to intensify trade and reduce cross-border delays. Pakistan's single window project is in the advanced stages of preparation and will soon be rolled out. Digital transformation can be instrumental in realizing the great tourism potential of the CARIC countries. The creation and promotion of a common umbrella brand, Wizard Silk Road, and development of a CARIC tourism web portal are steps in the right directions to share tourism-related information and generate business opportunities for the private sector. We need to build on such initiatives by introducing e-visa regimes and e-services for, for promotion of tourism. In the context of the pandemic, it is important to improve our disease preparedness systems for using, by, by using digital technologies. We can use digital platforms to standardize the health sector, raise awareness about disease prevention and exchange country experiences, especially with regard to the ongoing vaccination drive. In the education sector, the pandemic related restrictions necessitated online teaching methods through technology. CARIC countries can, collaborate, can collaboratively develop digital curriculum, e-learning modules, digital libraries, and lessons for our schools, colleges, and universities. Now, just to highlight a few barriers to cooperation. The foremost challenge is varying degrees of access to ICT tools and services, and lack of digital infrastructure within the CARIC region. It is therefore important to improve digital infrastructure and connectivity at a reasonable cost to reap the benefits of this change. While use of digital technologies offers new avenues for labor participation, it also prevents the vulnerable population without infrastructure or skills to benefit from new opportunities. We therefore need to make concerted efforts to bridge this digital divide by investing in digital literacy and skill development programs and reducing gender differences in ICT use to foster inclusion and equitable participation in the job market. The CARI countries need to ramp up engagements for greater cooperation in this critical area. Setting up a dedicated working group, nomination of country, sectoral focal persons, and commissioning a study through CARIC Institute to explore key areas of cooperation based on digital gap analysis could be good starting points. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So once again, uh, lots of areas of opportunity identified there, e-commerce, tourism, um, di disease preparedness and so forth, uh, and also education, but also barriers, uh, once again, with digital access and literacy. Um, I'd like to ask um, Mr. Xi Xin Chen, Vice President uh, Operations One at, at the uh, Asian Development Bank, um, for his perspective on this. How can CARIC um, facilitate cooperation between member countries during their digital transformation? And, and how can CARIC help the uh, its member countries overcome these these sorts of barriers when it comes to connectivity, digital literacy, private sector investment, and so on. Okay, thank you, Mr. Standage. Uh, let me uh, join you to thank uh, the government of uh, Azerbaijan, and also I uh, welcome our distinguished uh, uh, participants to this meeting. Uh, taking this opportunity, I'd like to just uh, share quickly uh, three points. Uh, first of all, uh, we have seen the pandemic accelerate uh, uh, the digital transformation in our character countries. However, as uh, our ministers mentioned before, we are also uh, encountering uh, many uh, fundamental barriers. Uh, such as, uh, as they mentioned, the, the considerable uh, varies in uh, regions uh, e-readiness, uh, inadequate uh, uh, digital infrastructure in some uh, character countries, lack of uh, harmonization uh, regulatory uh, framework and the policies across our region, 
and also uh, enlarge the digital divide. I think it's uh, also there. Uh, increase the risk of uh, digital data privacy and uh, security, as well as uh, some uh, problem of uh, digital taxation. I think those are the yeah uh, some key challenges there. Uh, then it comes to my second point, uh, that is the character program uh, can and also should uh, take the role on leading a uh, cooperation moving ahead strategically. I think uh, utilizing uh, ITC or digital transformation is a cross-cutting issue in our character strategy 2030. As you know, this year we are working on a character digital uh, strategy to adopt a holistic digital uh, transformation. Uh, we all see the COVID-19 pandemic uh, highlights the importance and also opportunities for digitalization, uh, not only in the responding uh, to the pandemic, but also uh, in all aspects of our life and the working. Uh, digital for regional uh, public goods and the global pu uh, public goods is overwhelming, I think. Uh, in addition to that, uh, uh, digital for inclusion, for say uh, no one left, uh, should left behind, digital for uh, human capital development, uh, for instance, education and job creation, and also digital for the green growth, uh, digital financing for all the areas. I think all of this uh, need to be strategically addressed. So CARIC program is the right uh, platform to function uh, this role. Uh, then I come to my last point, the third point. I believe a uh, CALIC program with uh, its uh, convenient power uh, should uh, strive for breakthrough uh, in uh, some uh, very uh, critical uh, areas. Uh, let me mention uh, just uh, uh, several of them. First, uh, mobilizing uh, financial resources for digital infrastructure, specifically in uh, poor countries and also rural areas where digital inf uh, infrastructure be uh, becomes a binding constraint uh, in uh, reducing the digital divide. Like children uh, cannot uh, have a remote learning when they're locked down in those areas. Secondly, uh, coordinating member countries' efforts on digital uh, policy harmonization and the mutual recognition across our region. Uh, without removing policy barriers, uh, digital transformation could only be isolated and segmented. Uh, thirdly, I think uh, promoting uh, sector initiatives uh, like uh, e-tourism, uh, e-trade, e-commerce, uh, e-health, and also e-learning as well. Uh, fourthly, I think it's important is, is to promoting uh, private sector participation. More importantly, uh, steering private investment to enhance digital financial inclusion. So lots of uh, practice there as well. Uh, last but not least, I think uh, we can, uh, the character program also can help to explore a better international taxation mechanism uh, to avoid the tax base erosion and uh, 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 profit shifting, as well as to encourage the digital technology competition. I think those are the, uh, uh, the, uh, our character program can uh, play the critical roles. So with that, uh, let me pause here. Thank you uh, very much. Great. Thank you very much. Once again, many areas of opportunity identified, but also barriers that need to be overcome. So um, now that we've heard uh, from our first three panelists about where all of these areas of opportunity are, um, and also some of the challenges, let's zoom in a little bit. What are the most important areas of common focus and opportunity among CARIC members when it comes to digital transformation? So what are they, what, what do the CARIC members have in common? the most and how can they work together uh, in these areas and how can CARIC help them to work together in these areas uh, that we just heard about things like e-tourism trade commerce regulatory uh, harmonization and so on uh, i would like to address that question to mr muhammad khalid payenda acting minister of finance for afghanistan thank you very much uh... Uh, Tom, uh, good afternoon, uh, good morning, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm honored to be here and talk about this. Uh, uh, I want to to thank uh, ADB and and Minister Jabbar from Azerbaijan for 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 co-hosting us on this important initiative. Uh, I believe all has been said and done on on, on this. So uh, 
I'll, I'll take references from what you said in your remarks, uh, uh, Tom. Tom and just now the the VP beautifully elaborated uh, some of these these points. I'll go by the three main principles that Carrick has set on good neighbors, good partners, and good prospects. We truly believe that there is a lot of prospect in, in the whole region. Uh, we, as, as Afghanistan, see it. Have, have the, the benefits not just in, in economic spheres, but, but going beyond to security and, and, and stability in the, in the whole region. Um, I, I think so, some of the, uh, the, the key areas that I see uh, for, for, for common focus and, and collaboration in this area is digital infrastructure. I, I think uh, and the digital data and trade could, could, could be uh, uh, improved and, and has enormous potential in this region. On uh, financial uh, inclusion and banking sector, as well as mobile payments, uh, we rely on on financial institutions beyond this this region to do trade with with our neighbors. So that that's another key area, and collaboration in this area can can improve uh, counter financing of terrorism and uh, anti money laundering uh, uh, prospects uh, as well. Health uh, is, is 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 a major area where uh, where. Uh, Digital transformation can can uh, benefit us, us a lot, and, and also trade and, and, and customs. Uh, trade and customs, uh, uh, not just the collaboration on infrastructure, but but also uh, 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 making sure that uh, there is a freedom of, of data to ensure that there are no evasions, mm -hmm. but also the the real uh, amounts of trade is is is, is captured. And, and finally, on 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 education, uh, there is a, a lot can be can be done within the region on collaboration on, on education. I think a digital uh, strategy that the carrot is rightly focusing on th this year would, would uh, our expectation would be that this this focuses on 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 these areas to to address uh, these these issues. Uh, we see uh, a lot of potential in, in, in the whole Karak uh, uh, region. Uh, one point for since Excellency uh, 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 Dr. Bandar Hajar and, and uh, VP and also from e EBRD are that what can be done is Karak looking into collaboration beyond just, just ADB and, and uh, collaboration between development act actors. Uh, so that we make most uh, use of, 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 of the resources available. Thank you very much. I look forward to, to the rest of the discussions. Great, thank you. I would like to now address the same question, I think, to, uh, to Mr. Oybek Shagazatov, uh, head of the Department for Cooperation with International Financial Institutions at the Ministry of Investments and Foreign Trade in Uzbekistan. Uh, what's your perspective on this and where do you think the most important areas of common focus and opportunity lie? Good, af uh, good afternoon, uh, dear Mr. Jabarov, Mr. Susan Chen, Mr. and uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, participants of this uh, important event. Uh, let me uh, first of all express my gratitude to the Asian Development Bank for the organization of this very important event. And regarding the question that you raised, I would like to say that the digitalization process uh, within the Karak region, uh, to, in, in order to be able to do that, we need to learn the experience and best practices of the developed economies. And the pandemic uh, of the COVID-19 made it clear for us uh, that the uh, everything depends on a digital economy and uh, the services that were not available for uh, decades, uh, they became available within a few months and uh, the members of the carry countries uh, also need uh, to develop uh, their access uh, and connectivity in all of the areas including agriculture education healthcare economy transport and communication and uh, we create new uh, opportunities uh, for cooperation uh, through the creation of uh, trade platforms for the Central Asian region and uh, inclusion of the automated uh, payment systems for the transportation of freight by rail and road. Third, the development of the electronic uh, systems of metering 
of uh, water and other resources in the agricultural sector. Also, we need to support experts in the information and communication technology sectors. Uh, for example, in the ITC sector of uh, Uzbekistan, there are more than 60,000 experts involved in this sector. So we are focused on uh, training and our program, our programming specialists uh, through the implementation of a new program, one million IT experts in Uzbekistan. And uh, we also focused on the development of the ameliorative uh, improvement of ameliorative processes and improving productivity of uh, agricultural lands. Uh, uh, so the most efficient uh, implementation of uh, business processes will uh, provide opportunities uh, for the leapfrog development uh, in all of the areas of economy. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed for that. Um, well, it sounds like there are quite a few common themes emerging here. Um, there seems to be uh, a fair amount of consensus that you can't do all of these other wonderful things until you've fixed the problem of access and uh, you've you've done more to close the digital divide and build infrastructure um, and so on. Um, what I'd like to uh, end this panel with is the final question, which is if there had to be a single area on which to focus, um, a single promising area in which to develop a pilot project to demonstrate the value of digital transformation in promoting regional cooperation, what would that area be? Uh, so I'd like to start by addressing that question to Mr. Mohammed Geldi Sadarov, the Minister at the Ministry of Finance and Economy in Turkmenistan. Thank you very much, dear participants of the CARIG meeting. And I would like to express my appreciation uh, to all of the participants uh, for your time. And I would like to wish all of you good health and productive work. And I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate Mr. Yevgeny Zhukov with his appointment to the position of the Director General at the Asian Development Bank. And I would like to wish him success in his endeavors. And I would like to briefly describe the stance of Uzbekistan in terms of development of the Karak region through digitalization. Based on the estimates of the international institutions, the digitalization is a key driver of economic growth and the relevance and prospects of the digital development of the economies of the region should be reflected in the main directions of the implementation of the CARIC digital strategy. And the implementation of digital technologies in the CARIC region involves a collaborative and proactive approach, including a shared vision agreed upon by all private and public sector stakeholders common strategies, objectives, and long-term measures. And uh, we believe that the transition to the shared digital platforms will foster innovation and pave the way for generating regional dividends for all countries in the region. And digital economy increases the efficiency of trade transactions. It improves transparency and accountability eliminates delays and reduces risks of all kinds. Reducing transaction costs associated with the movement of non-digital goods and services, for example, through regional customs reforms, would, in our opinion, have significant economic impact, including stimulation of the growth of digital trade in the countries of the region. Digital trade and custom solutions include online export and import processes that accelerate cross-border trade in goods and services, as well as related services, including logistics, customs clearance, and licensing and certification services as well. And uh, in particular, the single window system brings together all government agencies involved in the export and import procedures allowing companies to submit their documents electronically from any location, wherever they are. And as a pilot project for the CARIC member countries, 
we propose to consider developing cooperation towards reducing internal and cross-border barriers to trade in goods, as well as promoting sustainable transport and improving transport connectivity. Trade and transit facilitation should be coupled with more effective official control measures. So the facilitation of these uh, procedures in trade and transit will result uh, to improvement in the procedures of uh, border control. So we suggest the following steps uh, to be taken to launch the proposed pilot project. First, we need to strengthen the regional cooperation through coordination of the ongoing regional trade facilitation reforms as well as private sector involvement through the establishment of a dialogue platform under the CARIC program. Second, we need to increase CARIC's involvement in implementing trade and transport facilitation conventions and agreements through joint studies, including the application of regulations that influence the regional cooperation under the CARIC program. Third, we need to we need to introduce innovative tools for simplifying border crossing procedures uh, and introduce a unified model of checkpoints and related procedures as well as introduce an electronic u at the border system assisting in implementing the framework standards for customs clearance and control in the caric member countries which should be actively pursued and I would like to note that the implementation of the region's digital agenda would require the creation of expert platforms, as well as a network, network of competence centers and excellence centers, formation of a pool of initiatives and projects, and building partnerships with those who have chosen the path of digital transformation. Dear ladies and gentlemen, Deploying the current digital integration platform and ensuring international operability in the region will give impetus to the development of the next generation of effectively interacting systems, ensuring the creation of a common digital economic space, as well as development of the digital economy in the CARIC region. In conclusion, I would like to thank everyone for their active cooperation and uh, your dedicated effort. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much. A very clear answer there. Focus on reducing um, the, uh, the, the barriers at, um, at the borders between current countries and uh, basically integrate them um, to improve cross-border trade in both goods and services and with coordinated customs regulations and so on. Um, so very straightforward answer there. Uh, I'd now like to turn to Mr. Sultan Akhmatov, the Deputy Minister for the Ministry of the Economy uh, and Finance in Kyrgyzstan uh, for his perspective on where we can have the, most, the single most promising area to develop a pilot project. So what's your perspective? Thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. I would like to greet all of the participants of this uh, webinar, which is very important for all of us, especially in the context of the second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. All of the issues that we are discussing today, they are quite crucial and relevant. And I will briefly tell you the following as the single most promising area for pilot projects is the electronic commerce. And uh, the pandemic of the COVID-19 has highlighted the importance of uh, pursuing the development of e-commerce, uh, although there are some challenges related to the various levels of uh, development uh, in, this, in the region and of which in the region is uh, the pioneer and the champion the People's Republic of China is the pioneer and the champion in the region. 
in terms of development of electronic cameras and uh, the development of electronic cameras would allow us to overcome all of the uh, barriers uh, that hamper movement of uh, goods and is a barrier to exchange of human resources and uh, through the development of e-commerce we will be able to get rid of the need for physical interaction and even in the lockdown context we will be able to keep on promoting our economic development so i believe that we need to, to implement this pilot and as our colleagues said before me this issue has been included into the development strategy of the CARIC program. And uh, for your reference, I would like to say that the Kyrgyz Republic has also adopted the e-commerce development strategy till 2030. And we need to learn from the best experience of our neighbor countries uh, to be able to leapfrog and uh, by the example of the best practices, uh, which is uh, applicable in our context. So my suggestion is uh, to look into this direction. Thank you. Over to you. Great. Thank you very much. So once again, a uh, endorsement for the idea of pursuing closer ties on, um, on digital trade in both goods and services. Um, I'd like to go back now to Mr. Jabarov uh, for the perspective from uh, from Azerbaijan. So, what's your um, uh, what's your take on this? Uh, yes, thank you very much, Tom. Uh, I'd like to join uh, in my uh, uh, assessment to remarks of my uh, esteemed colleagues, also uh, ADB uh, representative, who spoke on the subject. I think uh, Azerbaijan uh, Azerbaijan would underline that. Uh, um, <clears throat> The development of an integrated uh, transit and transport information uh, system uh, uh, may serve uh, as a very tangible uh, tool, uh, which would not only enhance the uh, transportation cross-border transaction, uh, uh, transit potential, unlock transit potential of, all, of our countries, but I think will also lead to two important elements. One is to a, a closer integration of economies, uh, more freer uh, movement of uh, goods, uh, people, and actual ideas. Uh, uh, and secondly, to unlocking uh, a related number of related uh, uh, issues, uh, uh, ranging from um, customs procedure uh, to uh, value uh, added services that can be uh, added uh, online. Uh, uh, and, and even will uh, impact uh, um, issues which was mentioned in uh, VP, uh, ATB VP president uh, remarks. Uh, he spoke about um, digitalization of uh, uh, taxation, international taxation and the transformation. And the truth is that especially in the areas such as uh, customs interaction uh, in the areas of um, uh, information uh, exchange between uh, authorities, I think having and starting with a link uh, with a tool which can be added by uh, modules as the uh, cooperation and elements grow, uh, this, uh, in my opinion, can serve as a, uh, uh, if it's not a low hanging fruit, but it's definitely a product that we can achieve working uh, together. And I think uh, uh, if um, the initiative can be formulated and uh, put together as a, sort of action plan, uh, then it will be up for uh, current member uh, countries to uh, do everything it can. Azerbaijan has already established United Transit Operator uh, for all cargo uh, uh, transiting through Azerbaijan in any uh, direction. We uh, now are able to uh, provide um, a single uh, a window and uh, 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 it is backed uh, it is actual front office for the uh, digital information uh, system that at this stage we develop nationally. But of course, uh, it will uh, need to, uh, in order to uh, be more suitable, uh, it will need uh, to be built up uh, further. Thank you very much. Um, 
Right. Thank you very much indeed. A very clear cons uh, consensus there that the, this is the way forward and is the most promising area for a pilot project. Now, we did promise to take some questions from the audience, and we have one question that has been uh, voted up the largest number of times, and this is to do with how the digital divide can best be closed. Um, so uh, the question is, how can you overcome the digital divide um, uh, within the Carrick region countries? I would like to ask... Um, both the representative for the Kyrgyz Republic and for Afghanistan to comment on this. And then we're going to hear uh, finally um, from the representative for the AIIB. But um, but uh, perhaps we could start with the Kyrgyz Republic representative, um, uh, Mr. Sultan Akhmatov. How do you think the Karak member countries should address this problem of uh, of connectivity and closing the digital divide? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Tom. And I believe that this is a very important question. And uh, this divide is mostly related to infrastructure, to the existing infrastructure. So we need to develop infrastructure. If we take a look at the context of uh, institutional capacity, in this term, in this regard, the development is uh, faster than the development of physical infrastructure. So I believe that uh, the employment of uh, integrated approaches will allow us to eliminate uh, this divide among the countries. And so by developing and creating and developing the infrastructure, we will be able to adapt our capacity and integrate our systems across Central Asia. Thank you. Over to you. Okay, thank you. And uh, what's your perspective on this? Um, uh, if we could hear from the uh, uh, the representative from Afghanistan. Um, thank you. Yeah, th thank you very much, Tom. Uh, apologies for the blackout earlier. Proves the point that we have to in invest in, 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 in the uh, fiber optic here and uh, from my end. I think it's both structural and institutional issues. Uh, uh, I think uh, it requires working on clear list of policies to, to see amongst the, uh, the, the carrot countries uh, for a streamlined position. I can give you an example of uh, trade. Uh, infrastructure uh, is, is an is a issue, but in most areas, it's not a bottleneck. The, the binding bottleneck is a, a lack of collaboration between, between the neighbors. We have minimum uh, amount of infrastructure that could allow uh, regional trade. I think it's the same same issue issue here. We need to invest in the inf infrastructure, but whatever is invested in the CARIC countries should be geared towards uh, uh, regional connectivity rather than uh, internal connectivity uh, at, at the first step. So prioritizing that because it requires a lot of investment, but then uh, collaboration on, on institutional and, and policy issues uh, would, would help uh, make sure that it, it uh, gets up and running. Thank you. Great. Um, well, we have many examples of that sort of cooperation um, from other parts of the world, which the CARIC member countries could perhaps benefit from. The one that strikes me um, is the East uh, African community, where there is not just a single visa that allows people to move between those countries, but there is also, in effect, no roaming charges. Uh, it's treated like a single network by many of the network operators, and that have re really has done a lot to boost economic integration um, and, uh, and boost trade and integration in that area. Brilliant. OK, we're now going to move on to the second second panel discussion. So thank you very much indeed to our uh, panellists in the first for all your contributions. Um, the second panel discussion is on the role of CAREC in promoting public-private partnerships to deepen digital transformation. Uh, once again, you're invited to submit questions uh, as we go along, and we hope to uh, get a couple of questions in at the end. Uh, and I'd, once again, I'd like to remind our speakers to please keep to the, uh, the three-minute time limit. Uh, in responding to these questions so that we get to hear from everybody. Um, so the first question, uh, as I mentioned before, I would like to address to Mr. Joachim von Amsberg, the Vice President of Policy and Strategy at the AIIB. Uh, and that is, how can CAREC more effectively facilitate public-private dialogue and help to strengthen the participation of the private sector to mobilise technical and financial resources that, that are needed, as we've heard, for digital transformation? So how can CAREC help with that? 
Thank you very much, uh, and thanks for inviting AIB to join this discussion, which uh, I really want to congratulate you for picking this topic, uh, which is so much focused on economic opportunities. And we at AIB are still a very young multilateral development bank, but we have given ourselves uh, the mission to finance infrastructure for tomorrow, and that's infrastructure that's technology informed, that provides regional connectivity and mobilizes private capital. So it's very much aligned with the topic of this session, and we're very keen to work with our members in the, in the region. Now, uh, your question of how to really facilitate the dialogue and the inclusion of the private sector is extremely important because um, so much capital is available if tapped appropriately to help promote the agenda. Um, and so much innovation and productivity gains can be had by harnessing the private sector appropriately. And I would like to divide sort of the agenda into two parts. One is the hardware, the second one is the software. Um, the hardware is the connectivity, um, the, the networks, the fiber optics, uh, the satellites, the towers, all of that. Um, that hardware is critical for connecting the entire population and, and all economic actors to uh, uh, digital services and is critical um, to overcome the digital divide by serving the currently unserved. Now, private sector capital is generally quite readily available to invest in digital infrastructure um, if the regulatory framework is set up well and is set up to, um, in particular, ensure that the sort of digital divide is bridged and the unserved are included in the service. Um, so here, I think plenty of lessons can be learned from other infrastructure sectors which have faced quite similar challenges whether it's uh, 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 private investment in water companies or energy, um, there are decades of experience of successful and less successful regulation to bring private capital into those services. I think in digital infrastructure, it's a little easier. There's a lot of willingness and ready, readily available private capital there. But in terms of the regulatory framework, plenty of lessons I think can be learned of how to introduce obligations to provide universal coverage, without strangulating private investors with excessive regulation that will, in the end, just curtail their, uh, their, their drive. Now, let me turn to the software side. And by that, I mean um, the companies that create the ecosystem of tech companies, whether it's in fintech or infotech or other areas, the ecosystem uh, of the private companies that put their entrepreneurship, their energy, their innovation, and their capital into the sector. Um, it, here, I think, again, regulation plays a key role, um, but in particular, I think, a key role in preventing regulation that, uh, stifles, com that stifles competition and stifles innovation. Uh, these are new areas, so private companies need some space to experiment, to uh, bring new ideas, try new approaches. Um, and even though some regulation is necessary, for example, in the financial sector, they are very interesting experiences in other parts of the world with regulatory sandboxes where the standard regulations are sort of put aside and the uh, and a special dialogue is established between the regulators and the industry to develop really appropriate innovative approaches uh, for regulation uh, of those areas. The last point I want to make is uh, that for development of the ecosystem of uh, companies that provide digital services, um, scale is quite important. And this is where I think the regional cooperation that it's the topic of this discussion is highly appropriate. Um, not every, especially smaller country, will be able to have the full economy of scale in each of the subsectors where we talked about the opportunities today. So it is quite desirable and quite conceivable that there will be specialization. Um, but that scale, where let's say the, the ecosystem in one country can serve the entire region in a certain subsector, is only possible if the barriers between countries are removed. And this leads me to, to, to endorse and resonate with the comments made by many previous speakers who talk about the need to reduce customs barriers, other regulatory barriers. Um, can, for example, medical services be provided across boundaries? We talked already about trade. But these are the kinds of regulatory issues where public and private sector need to work together uh, very closely to facilitate the growth um, of the ecosystem. And let me just mention as, as an inspiration uh, uh, what has been done in other parts of the world. Um, 
we have invested in a satellite network in Indonesia to bring high-speed internet to thousands of unserved islands through a private investor um, who, within the appropriate public regulatory service uh, regulation, provides high-speed internet services to those remote areas. On the ecosystem side, uh, again, let me refer to ASEAN, the uh, Southeast Asia, where I think you've seen over the last just few years a very exciting ecosystem of scale develop uh, where companies are serving a regional market. Regional companies serving a regional market based in different cities of the uh, Southeast Asia uh, region. So I think there are plenty of interesting examples to inspire each other in terms of uh, growing this agenda and building very strong public and private partnership. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much indeed. And yes, in telecoms in particular, we do have many examples from around the world of uh, that the Karak region could could learn from, um, and in particular about how the importance of scale and uh, countries working together uh, can mean that um, smaller countries uh, can be can be helped along. Um, I, another good example of scale, obviously, is the success of the rollout of of mobile telecoms in China. Um, so I'd like to turn now to Mr. Changwu Zhou, the Director General for ADB WBG at the Department for International Economic and Financial Cooperation um, uh, for the People's Republic of China. And um, what's your take on how CAREC can more effectively facilitate public-private dialogue in this area? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thanks also go to uh, Shi Qing, uh, the VP for ADB, who is my good friend. Well, it is quite opportune for us to have a theme discussion uh, on digital transformation uh, here uh, at these ADB annual meetings, uh, though we are still on holiday. Obviously, uh, we, are, we all sides uh, should uh, prepare ourselves for the post COVID-19 euro and uh, make uh, joint efforts to promote uh, digital transformation for current uh, members in order to spur the region's economic and uh, uh, social recovery and growth. In the whole process, we believe the PPP modality will have a critical role to, to play for such a transformation. I have four uh, observations. One, build a consensus and a strengthen strategic guidance. Broad consensus and a strong support from the government and the society are key to engaging the private sector. CARIC should uh, formulate uh, the digital economy strategy and the action plan to provide strategic guidance for the private sector based on CARIC 2030 strategy, as mentioned by uh, VP Chen. For the, for, for the, uh, and in, also in line with uh, the demands of the members. In addition, CARIC could uh, further align its programs with the region's relevant development initiatives and involve both public and the private sector through CARIC forum, seminars, and others for better communication and cooperation. A second point, mobilize financial resources and facilitate digital infrastructure connectivity. In this sense, MDBs are better positioned to contribute as their funds have substantial cost advantage and the convenient power. CARIC should uh, encourage ADB and other MDBs to scale up their investment in digital infrastructure and uh, mobilize more other resources from both public and the private sectors. Meanwhile, CARIC could uh, explore innovative ways to attract private capital. Uh, for example, through risk mitigation or guarantee fund, among other means to lower investment risks. My third point is strengthen capacity building and bridge the digital divide as repeatedly mentioned by uh, the previous speakers. There is a huge need for digital tenants and the technology in developing countries. CARIC should help members speed up digital tenant building by vocational education and knowledge sharing and also by working in partnership with multinational institutions, such as the World Bank, ADB, AIB, uh, IBD, and also Curric Institute to benefit from 
the financial and expertise resources. My last point is to strengthen coordination of regulatory policies and optimize the business environment for digital economy. I would echo the points made by my previous speakers. This will promote the application and the development of digital technology. Certainly, CARIC will help to strengthen policy exchange and cooperation with such stakeholders as international institutions, national regulators, and the labor organizations for better coordination in regulatory policies, in particular with regard to data security, information protection, and the antitrust. All these efforts are meant to promote inclusive and prudent regulation and to create a more fair, just, and a sound business environment for the growth of the digital economy. I thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we'll get to the question of, um, of harmonizing standards and uh, um, regulations and, and data sharing and that sort of thing in a moment. Um, but, uh, but first, following up on that point um, about the importance of the role of development banks in all of this, uh, I would like to call upon uh, Susanna Hargitay, the Managing Director for Central Asia for the EBRD. What's your perspective on uh, where uh, development banks can fit in here and facilitate this sort of public pri private dialogue uh, that's so necessary? Thank you very much, Tom. Greetings to all participants. EBRD is not a novice in most of the CADEC region, but I am. So let me bring uh, what you were suggesting, Tom, also some perspectives from where I used to work, which is Southeastern Europe, where we have been rolling out a couple of digital projects, but also responding to some of the comments made by the previous speakers. So first of all, uh, yes, digital transformation is one of the top three priorities for the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development as well. This is both for direct financing, but also weaving it into at least every second investment we, we are making, whether it's for SME financing, whether it's uh, a grid development, whether it's, uh, again, financial institutions work. Now, when it comes to private sector participation, a couple of thoughts. Uh, my colleague from AIIB came from the hardware software side. Let me come from the protagonist side. So one that we would certainly like to explore, and it was also suggested just by the previous speaker, how to set up. I know you love, Tom, these workshops, but if they are well targeted, they can bring additional benefits among real economy participants like chambers of commerce. And they have been their no Knowledge and their requests have been very put together, very good use when it comes to regulations for logistics, e-certificates, whether it's phytosanitary, whether establishment of green corridors. So we need to take their views into account, but also, again, setting up e-commerce platforms, even on a regional basis. This is something that we are pioneering in Southeastern Europe. The other bit is the financial sector. So again, uh, a workshop on how to bring, and other participants mentioned, closer together regulations. Somebody mentioned the regulatory sandbox, so that the financial sector could be incentivized through regulation to roll out mobile payments, mobile banking. First, it will not be cross-border, let's face the reality, but at least in the countries as they are rolled out. And then we shall get also to cross-border because these regulatory issues are almost, and I will exaggerate here, foolproof of what needs to be taken into account. Colleagues already mentioned security, anti-money laundering. So again, this, this could be a fruitful discussion. Then another discussion should take place with respect to investors operators. So when it comes, for instance, to broadband rollout, uh, there are a lot of investors that are also operators who would be ready to invest, for instance, in last mile access, with the state investing in mid-mile and tendering out the operation of the full network when we are talking about outreach, obviously, beyond urban areas. Uh, this is how one could involve, basically, it's a form of a public-private partnership, if you agree with me, because it's not the full in front of the full uh, monte that the, that the sovereign state would have to invest in, but you harness. And also, the operations are continued and, again, we are happy to help also with contracts 
with such operators or tenders, which is the case. Another area where we would certainly see potential for private sector in involvement is skills, education. We are setting up now, again in Southeastern Europe, a whole platform, yes, catering for various languages uh, that would provide niches for vocational training, also for digital training, once we have the access, of course, uh, and we can get back to this digital divide, but also through vetted private sector uh, education service providers. They exist. We use many of these consultancies as well to advise small and medium-sized enterprises of how to go digital. So again, using e-learning and private sector service providers, I believe uh, participants may agree with me. It's another way of harnessing that knowledge. Now, the bravest we should be, and I don't know whether we are there, considering also private sector service providers for the various aspects of e-governance. Yes, we are conscious of national security concerns, of, again, data protection, but perhaps we could think about, and, and some of the participants mentioned, uh, we call it uh, e-agrar. So again, just the registration of who has what land, what is the crop production, it could already inform the governments of what kind of policies they have to formulate. It could provide the governments with access to agricultural producers. Could horrible addicto such a service be run by private sector service providers and provide such data? You're smiling, Tom, I know uh, today I'm in an optimistic mood. Uh, but again, this can be done. Uh, there are also uh, other kind of precedents that e-services for governments can also be harnessed. This is my very short kind of take on how we could develop further ideas of involvement of private sector into digitalization. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed for that perspective, and particularly the point that um, these are problems that have been solved through regional cooperation in other parts of the world. So the expertise is out there, and we have a template for the involvement of private companies in these areas. Once again, I know I keep going back to telecoms, but telecoms is a very interesting example. The expansion of access to telecoms uh, around the world has always been the result of the opening up of telecoms markets to competition, very often to foreign uh, operators and so on. But, um, but you know, as soon as you liberalize and allow more people in, uh, access uh, goes up and prices go down. Um, you also talked there about the importance of knowledge sharing, um, not just between the public and private sector, but I think we should discuss the, uh, the question of knowledge sharing and coordination within the region. Um, so given the need for the, uh, the harmonization of standards and data sharing and so forth that will be necessary to do things like integrate regional trade, how can CARAC help with that? How can it help with coordinating standards, with data management and with knowledge sharing and with bringing in expertise uh, from outside the region in all of those areas? Um, to address that question, I would like to call upon Mr. Lasha Kutsishvili, the Minister of Finance for Georgia. Thank you. Thank you, Don. If you look at the successful, if, uh, successful uh, examples of regional integration, we will see that need to harmonization uh, economic system uh, is very important. As the, uh, as the uh, promotion of regional trade and the formation of logistic corridor can be identified as the two main objectives of uh, current regional cooperation. The harmonization of uh, administrative systems in these two in those these two areas is uh, crucial. Uh, first is cross-border trade facilitation, and here I would like to mention uh, one very important project that is strongly supported by ADB. This is an innovative idea uh, of single customs checkpoint between Azerbaijan and Georgia. This is a project that creates uh, respective hard infrastructure, but not only. Uh, the project will develop a digital infrastructure uh, connected to the information system of both countries. We are confident that this will significantly, uh, significantly um, case cross-border movement and uh, possibly become a good model for the entire 
uh, Carrick corridor. And the second is development of uh, logistics uh, corridor. Despite the apparent geographical advantages of the corridor, uh, different legislation and diverse administrative systems make the corridor less attractive. However, this is where digital transformation can help again. Digital solutions for harmonization of standards, correct white coordinated data sharing system can be the element which might boost the uh, potential of the corridor. In addition, uh, countries should focus on reform aimed uh, at deregulating of the sector vital for the corridor development uh, and uh, promoting the role of the private sector. Also, it's uh, almost all countries of the region, uh, state-owned enterprises can play an important role, especially in the development of the um, transport corridor. And, uh, and I'd like to emphasize the importance of the reforming of the SOE sectors. Uh, this has the potential to bring the higher efficiency to the corridor. In all, in all this area, we see the important role of ADB. Thank you. Great, thank you very much indeed. So it's it's um, a question of um, of learning by doing from the sound of things, and a couple of these um, pilot programs, if they go well, could potentially provide a model for the whole Carrick region. Um, so that sounds like a very practical way forward. Um, I'd now like to call upon Mr. Javklan Bold, uh, the Minister of Finance for Mongolia, uh, for his perspective on how Karek can coordinate these, the harmonisation in these important areas. Your Excellency Minister Mikhail Jabaro, dear Mr. Evgenia Djoko, moderator Mr. Tom Standage, and fellow panellists. Distinguished guests, it's my pleasure to attend the event. As a panelist, I'm Jokhan, Minister of Finance of Mongolia. COVID-19 pandemic has been a huge challenge to countries all over the world. Mongolia was not an exception. The pandemic continues to pose significant challenges to our financial stability and the socioeconomic condition and the challenges are expected to continue for uncertain amount of the post COVID-19 pandemic. Such uncertainty caused protectionism, the tendency toward greater state control or supervision, and the less trust in foreign supplies of goods. The initial instinctive reaction to the COVID-19 crisis last year by most countries was to look inwards and act alone. Countries have closed their borders, supply chains have been disrupted and regional economic activity has fallen. Therefore, as a result, we must take comprehensive measures, not only in the public health sector, but also to protect the revive the economy, balancing the support to the health sector and the economy. However, the current situation has proven that the bilateral and regional collaborative measures are necessary to address common issues, overcome this difficult period and moving forward. In this term, CARIC as the main platform for the Central Asian region must play a key role for the economic and the social interactions among member countries to the mitigate the adverse impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. Regional integration projects could assist countries jointly tackle the challenges of COVID-19. Such projects can implement collective measures which addresses not only health sector, but also revives the stagnant economy. Any joint efforts to enhance regional economic activities, to accelerate the regional trade flow based on the transparent and da transparent data would mitigate the existing downturn. Sharing data and uh, experience on the public health sector, including the patient symptoms, treatment methods, 
post-treatment conditions and health sector training. Even the management of the health facilities shall be crucial impetus for overcoming the pandemic. Moreover, member countries can benefit from continuing our collaboration through the CARIC platform in reviving regional economic activities. In relation to the trade sector, this crisis can be an opportunity for CARIC countries to encourage a new trade path within the region, including e-commerce, paperless trade. Such new development requires development of virtual platform and further involvement and interaction of members. Based on the transparent and cross-border data laws, regional countries could collaborate in easing their border service and to support trade flow within the region. We are certain that CARIC program can facilitate such projects and serve as a platform for data and experience sharing amongst the member countries to overcome this difficult period. I would like to express, express to full commitment of the government of Mongolia in implementing such measures and providing all necessary support in this matter. Thank you very much. I hope you all will stay safe and well. Thank you very much indeed. And you make a very good point there that um, the pandemic has led to um, cooperation and sharing of best practice between many countries uh, around the world on a regional basis, but also internationally. Um, so for the final question, um, how can we apply this sort of learning um, from other countries that, um, you know, that are further ahead and have, have experienced um, uh, the benefits of these sorts of changes? How can we apply that to digital transformation? So what can CARIC member countries learn from each other, but also what can they learn from countries outside the region about the best way to approach digital transformation? And who should they be trying to borrow from and what should they be trying to borrow? Um, to respond, I would like to first call on Mr. Nematulo Hikmatulo Zoda, the assistant to the president of Tajikistan on economic issues. Over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to express my appreciation to all of the participants for your time and effort and active participation in this discussion. I also would like to express uh, my appreciation and gratitude to the uh, government of Azerbaijan for the chairmanship in this program this year. And I would like to say that uh, the CARIC program provides uh, considerable support to all of the CARIC member countries to ensure sustainable development uh, in the region uh, for the development of technically sustainable and well-balanced uh, uh, decisions based on the best practices as well as uh, the strengthening of the open and inclusive platform of cooperation including regional regular regional meetings such as the one that we have today and regarding your question i would like to say that regular ongoing dialogue and intergovernmental exchange of experience and best practices among members of the region as well as uh, countries outside of the region will help us accomplish our objectives in all of the sectors of economy. And uh, we can learn by the example of Estonia and Singapore or reform of uh, electronic uh, government and services in Azerbaijan and Georgia and successful experience of uh, Pakistan in deploying uh, the broadband uh, communication services uh, in remote areas. Uh, with the support of the facility that was established several years back, as well as the successful experience of the PRC, which is moving towards becoming the world's first cashless economy. And the experience of European countries is also very exciting, especially in the area of e-government, protection of data, development of data technologies and ensuring community engagement and involvement of the civil society into the various processes, as well as the positive practices in the reform of telecommunication sectors 
and uh, application of artificial intelligence technology, big data handling, development of uh, the enormous uh, market of financial technology and application of various technology in various sectors, such as uh, the agricultural sector. Also, there are very good examples and good practices of development of the ICT sector in uh, such uh, African countries as Nigeria and Kenya, as you mentioned before. And the example of India in terms of outsourcing is also very interesting. And I would like to say that in Tajikistan, we have approved the digital economy concept a year back, which was developed with the involvement of the World Bank experts. And I would like to express the deepest gratitude to the World Bank for the ongoing support in developing our digitalization. Thank you. Over to you. Great, thank you very much. Lots of examples from all around the world there. Um, but coming back to the Karak region, I'm very glad that um, uh, uh, we have uh, someone from Kazakhstan we can ask about uh, e-government in particular because uh, Kazakhstan is recognized as a, as a leader uh, in the region. Um, so um, uh, I'd be interested to hear about that, but also um, about which other countries around the world can uh, offer advice and best practices to uh, the Karak member country. So I would like to call upon, please, Mr. Alibek Kurantriov, the Vice Minister for the National Economy uh, of Kazakhstan. Yeah, thank you, Tom. Let me greet, uh, first of all, Mr. Jabarov, Dr. Bandar Hajar, Mr. Evgeny Zhukov, uh, all ministers and participants, governors and elder governors. Special thanks to the ADB for organizing this session. Well, it is true that the experience of all CARIC member countries and other countries in applying the effective uh, approach, approaches to digital transformation in the field of PPP is interesting and important uh, for all of us. Undoubtedly, each of the CARIC uh, member countries has achieved certain results in digital transformation. In the first place, of course, it's China and also Uzbekistan has taken place. Uh, as uh, Mr. Standish noted, uh, Kazakhstan achieved substantial results in digitalization of the public sector. But now we're also uh, aiming at doing the same in the private sector and in industries. Uh, I would like to note that several high-tech projects have been successfully introduced and implemented in our country through the PPP mechanism, which has significantly influenced the digital transformation. In particular, the PPP project on the creation of the system for photo, video recording and video analytics, CERGEC, proved its effectiveness. Uh, the main goal of this project is to improve traffic discipline, as well as the level of traffic and public safety. Another project is the development of an information system for paperless workflow in the field of air cargo, which is called e -fright. This is the first PPP project of the Republican significance on digital, digitalization in the field of transport. Thanks to this project, our country significantly increased its capability as a transit hub connecting Europe and Asia. Uh, and as of today, the entire cycle of air cargo transportation based on international standards is digitally represented only in Kazakhstan. Another large scale project is provision of broadband internet access to rural uh, settlements in the country using the fiber optic communication light technology. Uh, the successful implementation of this project will uh, ensure favorable conditions for the introduction of the uh, most modern uh, digital services, such as digital government services, digital medicine and educational initiatives. International experience shows that uh, digitalization of government services is a useful way to increase the effectiveness of interaction between government agencies and the private sector, as well as to reduce costs. This can be seen from the successful examples of digital services for the private sector implemented in such countries as Estonia, Denmark, Finland, Sweden, Singapore, and South Korea. Uh, the experience of these countries is a great, uh, of great interest, uh, not only to our country, but to the whole current region. I believe that it is necessary to accumulate the existing uh, achievements, scientific potential, and ensure the transition to a new digital reality and cooperation within the correct uh, framework and outside of it will help to attract investments for, for the implementation of important social and infrastructure projects. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, 
I would like to now ask Mr. Chang Wu Zhou, uh, the representative from the People's Republic of China, for his perspective here. Clearly, China um, has gone through an extraordinary digital transformation in the last 20 years. So I wondered if there were any lessons that um, uh, that China could offer, in particular on the role that government can play in um, in helping this digital transformation come about in promoting things like um, e-commerce and, and so on. What's your perspective on that? Thank you, Chair. Thank you for the given floor again. Uh, uh, I'll have some quick points on um, how China do you hear, you know, to, 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 to take the digital economy as the top priority. Well, uh, the, the very first point is uh, speed up uh, infrastructure uh, construction. You know, we vigorously develop the new forms of infrastructure characterized by 5G data center, industry networks, and the smart cities to promote our comprehensive digital capacity. My uh, second uh, point is um, how we optimize development environment of digital transformation. Uh, the central government and also the local governments have intensively rolled out uh, policies to support the digital transformation and to, pro to, pro to pro provide comprehensive solutions for all business, uh, both small or, or, or giant. We have also formulated uh, several national standards, such as uh, evaluation models of the maturity degree of data management capacity and to strengthen standard guidance. Uh, the third uh, is to to grow our digital industry to be uh, uh, bigger and stronger. Uh, we focus on supporting the development of strategic emerging industries, such as big data, uh, AI, and the blockchain, and to cultivate uh, world-class digital industrial clusters uh, through uh, setting up uh, data centers and industrial zones and pilot zones. And uh, my uh, first uh, fourth uh, quick point is, how we improve the digital ecosystem uh, over time, as you know, uh, uh, pointed out by many speakers. We really work hard to strengthen data management and foster data factor markets, to facilitate data collection, management and usage, and uh, finally unleash the value of data factor. And uh, to, 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 for your information, China has, you know, established big data management administrations at all local levels to supervise, to manage, to force the data transaction market while maintaining the data security. The very last point is how we improve the digital governance. We explore ways to employ the digital technology to build a digital society and the digital government to make public service and social governance more digitally oriented. And uh, uh, I want to give a very uh, sh a short example. Uh, last week, uh, I visited uh, Shanghai, uh, where we see Shanghai's integrated online platform program, which has been so included into United Nations e-government survey 2020. You know, uh, just to do all things uh, on one platform. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yes, um, I think for years now, um, people have talked about how easy it is to pay parking tickets and things like that uh, through your phone in, in Shanghai. Thank you very much. Just staying on the subject of data, we are going to now take a question from the audience um, about uh, the challenge when you improve connectivity across borders, uh, what do you do about data standards? And in particular, uh, what do you do when different countries have different positions on things like privacy regulation um, or data retention? Uh, so I would like to address that question to Susanna Hargitay, please. Um, Tom, you probably know I like very challenging questions. <laughs> there, there is no magic wand here because there is different perception of risk with respect to data management, access to data, use of data, both by authorities and also the users, including the public and commercial users. So again, um, you will tell me I'm a 
kind of obsessed with workshops, but I think it's worth having the workshop so that CADEC members a bit better understand each other's concerns, the risk perception level of how they see it. It might be country specific and it might well be the case, but also to invite uh, those, have, those have, have established other kind of ten standards. Be it, you will not be surprised if I suggest European Union countries, but also again from outside, whether it's China, whether it's Japan, but have a discussion, uh, less statements, more kind of exchanges, hopefully an in-person meeting would facilitate such a discussion to understand which way CAREC as such would go. Of course, uh, I hope that colleagues would agree with me when I say that we at EBRD would not be advocates of lowering the standards, that is super maximum restrictions and uh, kind of breach of privacy so that we get there just because of national security concerns. But I repeat, I think that there should be a better understanding because it might very well be national security concerns. Commercial, there I see ampler kind of room for understanding how, uh, again, and who can access what kind of data for which purpose. But this understanding would need to be developed in the current community. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. Well, that is the perfect setup for, um, I would like to invite uh, the representative from Tajikistan to address this because um, just to summarize the discussions today, there is a very clear consensus that the the most immediate opportunity is to improve trade in goods and services across borders within the region by harmonizing technology, harmonizing standards and so on. So how will CAREC countries do that and ensure that worries about data regulation and different approaches to data uh, don't get in the way of that happening? Uh, I would be very interested to hear uh, your take on that. Um, over to the representative for Tajikistan. Thank you very much indeed. I would like to answer your question in the context of opportunities and capabilities of the CARIC program. What can we do? So in the light of these new challenges and the growing needs for investments, I believe that within the framework of the CARIC program, we need to increase the assistance and exchange of experience and knowledge and best practices on the harmonization and modernization of the legislative and regulatory framework in the area of ICT to develop open and competitive markets of telecommunications and improve the conditions for attraction of private investments. Attention should also be given to the study of new business models and best practices in the area of PPP, including the government support programs for the expansion of digital infrastructure of especially remote and hard accessible rural areas. In this regard, I would like to note the special role and significance of um, the CARIC Institute in this area. As far as the confidentiality is concerned, taking into account uh, future development of the digitalization and the colossal speed of the growth of the data massive, we need to pay special attention to the consolidation of efforts to improve the trust from the citizens and their protection from data abuse and negative consequences of data use. We need efforts to strengthen the national systems for the collection, processing, and storage of data for full-fledged implementation of the huge capacity in the area of data for the common good. At the same time, it is necessary to develop the legal norms aimed at improving the information security and the protection of personal data. I would also like to note in the context of uh, that in this context, cooperation of the government and the private sector is very important. Uh, we need to strengthen this cooperation within the framework of large-scale programs aided in improving the digital literacy of the population, and we need to expand in-depth programs in the area of new technologies such as artificial intelligence, big data, internet of things, and the robotization for their effective application in all sectors of the economy. And we also need to optimize the use and reduce the losses of energy. A very important role in this area belongs to the development partners that are members of our program, including the Asian Development Bank, the World Bank, Islamic Development Bank, the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development and all other partners. Thank you for your attention. And thank you very much, Mr. Hikmatulazoda. That was a perfect note on which to end our discussions. Thank you to all of our panelists for taking part today. Thank you for your questions. Um, and uh, 
I thought that was an extremely constructive discussion. And it's there's a very clear direction of travel that comes from that. So at this point, I'm now going to call on James Lynch, the Director General of the East Asia Regional Development uh, Regional Department, to make his concluding remarks. Uh, Mr. Lynch, over to you. All right. Well, thank you very much, Tom. And in my opinion, today's session was fantastic. And I think we all learned a lot from one another. Um, as we bring this session to a close, let me begin by thanking Mr. Tom Standage for being an excellent moderator for the panel discussions. And I think the uh, discussions today really highlighted the many roles um, that digital technologies can play in responding to the pandemic, but also in supporting longer term recovery. We also learned that by working together under the CARIC program, we can harness digitalization to strengthen regional cooperation, to stimulate economic growth, and to support more sustainable, inclusive, and resilient development across Asia and across Central Asia and beyond. So let me try to share with you three, three takeaways from today's session. First, the CARIC programs provides all of us with an ideal platform to promote digital cooperation. CARIC countries have already adopted their individual digital strategies, which is really a commendable starting point. And as we heard today, the CARIC program provides a unique <clears throat> opportunity for members to share their technical know-how and lessons learned and also to tackle many of the common challenges through digital solutions. Um, our cooperation on the Information Custom Exchange Initiative, for example, has yielded significant improvements in customs information exchange and in simplifying and harmonizing systems and procedures. Um, looking you know, beyond IT applications that facilitate cross-border trade, digital tools such as surveillance and early warning systems can help CARIC members control and prevent transnational threats to public health, agriculture, and the environment. Um, a second key takeaway is that there is a need to mobilize both private and public finance to support digital transformation in the region. We've seen how quickly the private sector has applied and reshaped digital technology in response to the pandemic. E-commerce, telemedicine, online education are just a few examples. As many participants mentioned today, partnerships between the public and private sectors play an increasingly essential role in developing, financing, and applying new digital technologies. For the CARIC region, there is tremendous potential to promote PPPs and catalyze private investments in the digital space. ADB can serve as a facilitator, enabler, and financier in this process and in responding to the digital needs and constraints of SMEs in the region is really, really a top priority. Uh, number three, regional cooperation and digitalization can help CARIC build back better. Building back better will require continued investment in quality infrastructure for the hardware across all sectors. But I think as we've come to learn, the software is more important than ever. Not only digital software, but software in terms of new reforms and policies to create the enabling environment innovation, application, and investment. So in this context, regional dialogue is so important for harmonizing standards, responding to the challenges of privacy and cybersecurity, as well as addressing the digital divide, both in-country, but also region-wide. So distinguished guests, today's session on reimagining regional cooperation to digital transformation represents a significant step forward as we begin to shape the CARIC digital strategy. On behalf of ADB, I'd like to thank everyone for their participation in today's session. A sincere expression of appreciation goes to Minister Mikhail Jabarov of Azerbaijan and ADB's Vice President Xi Jin Chen for their roles as co-chairs. And of course, to our CARIC country representatives and our development partners, thank you for your valuable insights and contributions this afternoon. Finally, we are very grateful for those who worked hard behind the scenes to make this virtual session possible, including this CARIC Secretariat, ADB's Office of the Secretary, and our IT department, just to name a few. So everyone, thank you very much. Stay safe and enjoy the rest of the day. This meeting is now adjourned.